Shiny Shadow Lugia and Shiny Zarua and Zarowark are coming to Pokemon Go along with some really relevant new Shadow Pokemon during the Halloween Part 2 event and Team Go Rocket Takeover. But how can you make the most out of the event? Well, in this video, I'm going to go through all the event details, my thoughts and tips, which Pokemon are worth catching, raids worth raiding, and more. So firstly, I'm going to start with the Halloween Part 2 event details, then I'll go through the Team Go Rocket Takeover. Halloween Part 2 will be taking place from October 26th at 10am to October 31st at 8pm local time, and will debut the new Trick or Treats Pikachu and Gengar, which can both be shiny. The event bonuses will be additional candy and candy XL for nice, great and excellent throws, costume Pokemon will have a chance to give additional candy when caught, and on Halloween itself, October 31st, costume Pokemon will have a chance to give rare candy and rare candy XL when caught. The wild encounters will be Trick or Treats costume Pikachu, Spooky Festival costume Vulpix, Murkrow, Mizzle, Mischievous Sableye, Halloween Mischief Costume Piplup, Drifloon, Yamask, Zoroa, which is a new shiny, Fennekin, Phantom, Spooky Festival Costume Pumpkaboo, Noiba, and Rare Spawn Trick or Treats Costume Gengar. In one star raids will be Ghastly, Mischievous, and Phantom. Trick or Treats Costume Gengar will be in three star raids, Darkrai in five star raids, and Mega Burnett in Mega Raids. Halloween themed field research will reward encounters with Miss Magius, Galarian Yamask, Phantom, and Grievard. There will also be a free timed research rewarding encounters with Zoroa, Phantom, costume Pokemon and more. So the Team Go Rocket Takeover will be running alongside the Halloween Part 2 event from October 26th at 10am to October 31st at 8pm. For the event bonuses, Team Go Rocket will be appearing more frequently at Pokestops and in balloons and you can use a charge TM to remove frustration from your Shadow Pokemon. Giovanni will be back for this event and this time he'll have Shadow Regigigas. There will be a new special research that you can complete to earn a Super Rocket Radar, challenge Giovanni and catch Shadow Regigigas. Also, Shadow Lugia will be making its debut in 5 star Shadow Raids on October 28th at 10am to October 29th at 8pm and it can be shiny. Team Go Rocket leaders and grunts will have different Shadow Pokemon and new Shadow Pokemon will make their debut. These new Shadow Pokemon being Ghastly, Rhyhorn, Barboach, Kranidos, Shieldon, Drillbur and Litwick. In 1 star Shadow Raids will be Ghastly, Grimer, Mizdravis and Litwick. In 3 star Shadow Raids will be Nidorina, Nidorino and Golbat and Shadow Lugia will be in 5 star Shadow Raids. In 12 km eggs will be Larvitar, Sandile, Pornyard, Vullaby, Dino, Pancham and Salandit. There will be field research tasks that will reward a mysterious component. So that's it for the details here are my thoughts and tips. You will get additional candy in Candy XL from catching Pokemon with nice, great and excellent throws. You normally get a base of 3 candy when catching a Pokemon, but if you catch it with a nice throw you'll get 4 candy, if you catch it with a great throw you'll get 5 candy and you'll get 6 with an excellent throw. This can also be increased by 2 times with a Pinat Berry or by 2.34 times with a Silver Pinat Berry. You will also have a chance of getting increased candy when catching costume Pokemon. So this will be for the Trick or Treats Pikachu and Gengar, the Spooky Festival costume Vulpix and Pumpkaboo and the Halloween Mischief Piplup. And these same Pokemon will have a chance to give you Rare Candy and Rare Candy XL on October 31st. Rare Candy can be turned into candy for any Pokemon, and Rare Candy XL can be turned into Candy XL for any Pokemon. So this is good for powering up Legendaries and Mythicals whose candy is hard to come by. Regarding candy, you can also Mega Evolve a Pokemon of the relevant type to get more candy, Candy XL and XP per cat. As most of the featured Pokemon are Ghost or Dark type, I would recommend Mega Evolving Sableye, which will work for both of these types. And if you don't have access to Mega Sableye, I would recommend Mega Evolving Gengar or Burnett. So Team Go Rocket will be appearing more frequently and usually for balloons this means they will appear every 3 hours as opposed to every 6 hours. It is worth taking advantage of this during the event if you are looking for specific shadow Pokemon or if you are looking to work on your Purifier and Hero Platinum medals or if you're after mysterious components, shadow shards, etc. There are some really strong new shadow Pokemon coming to the game for this event so even more worth checking these balloons. I will be getting into the new shadow Pokemon's meta relevances as we get later on into the video. And whilst we're on the topic of Team Go Rocket bonuses, charge TMs will be able to remove frustration from your shadow Pokemon during this event, so make sure you are prepared with some charge TMs ready for it. You can get charge TMs from Go Battle League, raids, showcases, routes, occasionally research, etc. So worth stocking up on some of these ready for the event. And if you don't have a lot of charge TMs, I would recommend using them on relevant shadow legendaries like Mewtwo, Raikou, Latios, Registeel, etc. And then some other non-legendary meta relevant Pokemon for raid attacking and for Go Battle League. Some targets for raid attacking could be God of War, Metagross, Salamence, Machamp, Mamoswine, Rampardos, Gengar amongst others. And for Go Battle League you might want to target Pokemon like Gligar, Swampert, Steelix, 
Dragonite, Gyarados, etc. Pretty much every Shadow Pokemon will be better without frustration, but these are just some of the meta relevant examples that you can target if you don't have so many charge DMs. I highly recommend removing frustration from as many of the Shadow Pokemon you have because it could be a while till the next Team Go Rocket takeover where we can do this, so take advantage of it now. There are no specific XP or Stardust bonuses during this event, but you can use Lucky Eggs to increase XP by 2 times, and you can use Star Pieces to increase Stardust gains by 1.5 times. Additionally, Sableye will be spawning in the wild, and this is a boosted Stardust Pokemon that will give 750 base Stardust per catch instead of the regular 100. And with a Weather Boost in Foggy Weather, it will give 938 Stardust, and with a Lucky Egg on top of that, will give 1406 Stardust. So worth catching as many Sableye as you can. Giovanni will have Shadow Regigigas this time around, and being a normal type, it means Regigigas will never be able to deliver any super effective stab damage. But even without that, its neutral damage with Shadow Boost is actually quite decent. But when it comes to comparison with other raid attackers that fit the raid matchup and can deliver super effective stab damage, it means Shadow Regigigas won't be as useful. So I would say that if you care about having the most meta relevant Pokemon, I would give this one a miss and stack your Super Rocket Radar instead. Either way, as the other Shadow Legendary Pokemon that Giovanni has had in the past, like Shadow Mewtwo and the Legendary Birds, Regigigas will more than likely come to Shadow Raids in the future, so if you don't get one from Giovanni now, you'll probably be able to get it from Shadow Raids in a year or two. But how do you get to fight Giovanni in Pokemon Go? Well, you need to progress through the Team Go Rocket special research that you get at the start of the event. It is a special research, so once you've logged in and claimed it, it won't disappear, so you will have plenty of time to complete it. The research normally has you battle grunts, catch and purify shadow Pokemon, and make some regular rocket radars from mysterious components you get from grunts to challenge the Team Go Rocket leaders. After this, toward the end of the research, you will receive a Super Rocket Radar that you can equip and use to find Giovanni's location. So if you have your Super Rocket Radar equipped and Giovanni appears in your balloon, I would only recommend challenging Giovanni in a balloon if you know you'll be able to beat him easily the first time round. This is because the balloons only stay around for a certain period of time and if you fight a few times and lose, there is a chance the balloon may time out and disappear and you'll lose your Super Rocket Radar and you'll not be able to get it back till the next Team Go Rocket takeover. So I would highly recommend searching for Giovanni at Pokestops instead. So if you decide that you don't want Shadow Regigigas, you can stack your Super Rocket Radar instead. To do this, you need to make sure that when you get the Team Go Rocket Takeover Special Research, that you don't progress past page 1. If you do progress past page 1, the next Team Go Rocket Takeover Research that comes out, you won't be able to get until you finish the last one. But if you don't go past page 1, the game ignores it and gives you the research instead. If you do this a few times, you'll have a few of these researches stacked, meaning you will be able to get multiple Super Rocket Radars to challenge Giovanni when he happens to have a Pokemon in the future that is of interest to you. So let's take a look at which Pokemon are worth catching in the wild and in research. Murkrow might be worth catching for the Candy and Candy XL for Shadow Honchkrow if you have it because it is a strong flying and dark type raid attacker. Sableye is worth catching because it does give 750 base Stardust like we mentioned previously, but it also is decent in PvP in its purified form in the Great League, being ranked 14 and it is also ranked 17 in the Halloween Cup. Your mask is worth picking up because Cofagrigus is ranked 78 in the Great League, 59 in the Ultra League, and 44 in the Halloween Cup. Zorua is a new shiny for the event, so worth going after if you want the shiny. It is, however, not a normal spawn in the wild. It actually appears on the map disguised as the Pokemon that is your buddy. So to easily see Zorua on the map, I recommend making your buddy a Pokemon that doesn't naturally appear on the overworld map. So for example, you could make your buddy a shiny Pokemon, legendary, mythical, mega form, shadow form, etc. Or you could just set your buddy as Zorua itself and it will appear as itself on the overworld map. Phantump is worth picking up because Trevenant is ranked 73 in the Great League, 61 in the Ultra League and 77 in the Halloween Cup. And whilst not very meta relevant, Noibat will be spawning and if you haven't evolved into Noivern yet, this will be a good time to get some candy because it does require 400 candy to evolve and it's a pretty rare Pokemon to see normally. Although it did have a community day in the past but if you missed it, now's a great chance to get some candy. Gengar is worth catching because Mega Gengar is the best ghost type raid attacker and one of the highest DPS Pokemon in the game. Gengar is also ranked 89 in the Ultra League and 58 in the Halloween Cup. From field research, Galarian Yamask will be available and Runa Regus is ranked 70 in the Great League, 96 in the Ultra League and 40 in the Halloween Cup. Grievard might be worth catching because Houndstone is ranked 78 in the Halloween Cup. However, outside of this niche cup, it doesn't really have any meta relevance. So moving on to which Pokemon are worth raiding in regular and shadow raids for the event. 
Starting with the regular raids, it's worth raiding Gengar for the reasons mentioned previously. Plus from raids it'll have a 10-10-10 IV floor, so if you're going for the hundo for raid attacking, it will be better to raid it than catch it in the wild where there is no IV floor. However, if you are after a Gengar for the Ultra League or the Halloween Cup, catching it from the wild could be better because you want 0-15-14 IVs for the Ultra League and 0-13-13 for the Halloween Cup. Darkrai is worth raiding because it is a top 10 dark type raid attacker and it is ranked 90 in the Master League. Mega Burnett might be worth raiding to get enough Mega energy for the first Banat you mega evolve. Remember, after the first time you do the mega evolution, you can walk any of your Shupper or Banat to get mega energy. Mega Banat is the second best ghost type raid attacker in the game and it has less weaknesses than Mega Gengar, so will be better in some situations. For the Shadow Raids, Shadow Ghastly is a new Shadow Pokemon and will be worth raiding because Shadow Gengar will be one of the best ghost type raid attackers with DPS comparable to Mega Banat, but it will have a lower TDO. Likewise, the new Shadow Litwick will be worth raiding because Shadow Chandelure is pretty similar to Shadow Gengar with slightly lower DPS but higher TDO. Shadow Chandelure will also be a top 10 fire type road attacker. Shadow Misdravus could be worth raiding but at a lower priority than the last two I've mentioned because Shadow Miss Magius is a top 10 ghost type road attacker. Shadow Golbat will be worth raiding because it is ranked 46 in the Great League and 72 in its regular form and it's ranked 3 in the Halloween Cup and ranked 2 in its regular form. Shadow Nidorina could be worth it for PvP because Shadow Nidoqueen is ranked 63 in the Ultra League and ranked 7 in the Halloween Cup. Additionally, Shadow Nidorino is ranked 53 in the Halloween Cup. Shadow Lugia will be worth raiding because not only is it the new shiny but also it is ranked 40 in the Master League and ranked 23 in its regular form so if you don't use it as a shadow you could also purify it and use it in its regular form and when purified it will also cost less to power up. So of the new shadow Pokemon that I haven't mentioned so far, Rhyhorn and Kranidos will be worth picking up because both Shadow Rhyperia and Shadow Rampardos will be top rock type raid attackers. Shadow Rampardos will have the higher DPS but Shadow Rhyperia will have the higher TDO. It's good to to note that Rhyperia is also ranked 44 in the Master League in its regular form. Likewise, Shadow Drillbo will be worth going for because Shadow Excadrill will be one of the best ground and steel type raid attackers. Shadow Barboach will be one to look out for as well because Shadow Whiskash will likely be a decent pick in the Great League and it is currently ranked 20 in the Great League in its regular form. So that's about it for the Halloween event and Team Go Rocket Takeover. This is probably one of the best events we've had this year with many new mess relevant Shadow Pokemon being released as well as some pretty nice shinies. Pretty excited for Shadow Zoro and Zoroark my Myself, so I'm hoping to get those shinies. Let me know what you think in the comments about the event. Check out this video on the screen now, like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.